Lord. Um, those people that aren't aren't here don't get to hear me talk you up for showing up to class because they're not here. Um, this this week's lab is another labster simulation that is going to be based around um, making solutions. Um, and so it's not being a labster simulation. It's not terribly uh, number based, calculation based, sort of walking you through the general ideas of how we make a solution. Um, a solution is just a mixture, a homogeneous mixture um, that we usually refer to solutions um, as being water-based. So remember when we when I was um, explaining how we write out the phases of the various um, the various phases of a chemical reaction you can have solid, liquid, gas or aqueous. Aqueous solutions wind up showing up all over the place because water is so ubiquitous. Water is everywhere. It's the most common solvent on our planet. And so we wind up using water as a way to um, allow things to react frequently. The problem is, is if it's not a pure substance, then in order to figure out how many moles we have um, of a particular compound, we need a concentration. You need to know how much of a particular compound you have in your solution, right? So all we're really adding is, so if it's a solid or a liquid, we can just use the mass to figure out how many moles we have. We use the molecular weight, we can cancel out grams and we can get to, to moles that way, right? Um, gases, we'll talk about, in a little bit, um, meaning a week or two. Um, but if we want to know how many moles we have in an aqueous solution, we need to know a concentration. And since, since we balance our chemical reactions based on how many atoms we have on both sides, not by how many grams we have on both sides, we're going to want a concentration that's based on how many moles we have, not you know, the concentrations you might be used to seeing are things like um, a percentage by volume or a percentage by mass or both co um, concentration units. Um, and another, another example would be something like, you know, how many, how many grams of sugar per liter if you're making a simple syrup or something like that. But because we want things in moles, we use concentration units that we refer to as, as molarity. So molarity is, is the, the chemist's preferred um, concentration unit. And it literally just means moles per liter. Nice. Um, if you have moles, if you know how many moles per liter you have, you can use your number of liters to figure out how many moles you have. You can use this as a conversion. Right? And so this is this is going to be the basis of all of the concentration problems that we do. Is if you know how many moles per liter you have, you can convert that to go from a volume to to number of moles. Right. And so we, that it's go ahead. How are we figuring out in the first place how many moles per liter we have? So a couple of ways. Either I have to give you how much some information, like you take 25 grams of sodium chloride and dissolve it in two liters of water. Okay. You can figure out your concentration if I give you enough enough information to calculate these two numbers. It just and it's then it's just like doing a density, right? You put your moles on top and your liters on bottom and then just do the division. Um, yeah. Or I can give you a concentration. If I give you a concentration, then you already have it in moles per liter. If I said something like um, the, so the way we write concentration is generally right in brackets. So if we want to say sodium chloride concentration, I put it in square brackets. Concentration of sodium chloride is 0 0.15 
moles per liter. Okay. If I give you a concentration, just like a density, you can use that as a conversion. Mm -hmm. Right. So all we're really doing is we're expanding our our unit vocabulary, really, and giving you another tool to get to a number of moles. Um, other, the shorthand for this, this is a common enough unit, moles per liter is a common enough unit that it gets its own shorthand in chemistry. We just use a capital M. So I could, it's a, the concentration of sodium chloride is 0 0.15 capital M. That capital M as a unit means moles per liter. Right, so, and again, I know chemistry is really, really nitpicky when it comes to writing your units the right way. Um, one of the most common mistakes I, may, I see made is people will write capital N to just mean moles instead of moles per liter. And that confuses things because now it's not a conversion. Capital M is moles per liter. Right, and so um, if we wanted to, so let's let's do a quick example. Let's calculate the concentration of, we'll do sodium chloride again. Let's say you take, say we're making, um, we're making pasta and you salt the water and you put, I don't know, 15.5 grams of NaCl in 500 milliliters of water. How would we figure out our molarity of sodium chloride? We'd have to convert the 500 milliliters to liters first, right? You could start by doing that. So 500, and let's say it's three sig figs just for the sake of having sig okay. figs on here. 500 milliliters and every thousand milliliters is one liter. We're getting good at the easy conversions by now, right? Yeah. That one should be, at least you know what to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> so 500 divided by a thousand is gonna be 0.5, right? So we know we have 0 0.500 liters, that's our volume. And concentration of anything is always moles over liters. So we're just going to put our liters and put it there. Now we just need to figure out how many moles of sodium chloride we have. Um, so I would look at how many would I, I don't know. I, would I look reference a periodic table for this? You absolutely would. Okay. So I would look at sodium and chloride. So sodium per mole, what, is that what I would say? So it's, it's, it's atomic mass is. Yeah. What's the symbol for it again? Sodium, sodium, sodium. Na. Okay, right. Or so left. Na, yeah. So 22.991 and then plus. Chloride, so 35.457 divided by 500 mil, or no, divided by 0.5 liters. Almost. So this gets you grams per mole. Oh. Right. So that's not just grams, that was grams per mole. So we're going to yeah. use this number to convert 15.5 into moles. And then we divide by 0.5. All right, so then that winds up being so twenty two point nine nine one plus five point four five seven, so fifty eight point four because we got three sig figs, right? Point four. Point, I think we or yeah, you know it's I always wind up keeping all the sig figs when I do atomic mass because why not keep extra sig figs? So I would write 50, okay. 
So that's right. grams per mole. mole. So if I have 15.5 grams and every mm -hmm. 60 grams is one mole, we're going to use, we're going to cancel grams out with grams. So 15.5 grams. And for every 58.448 grams, we'd have one mole of NaCl. Grams cancels okay. grams, we're left in moles. So 15.5 grams divided by 58.448. And that's, then now I divide. And then you're gonna take that number and divide by 0.5, exactly. Okay. So this winds up being something really close to about 0.25, right? Yeah, let me. I got, hold on, let me try that again. Five divided by 0.265. Yep. And then we would divide it by moles over the liters, which is 0.5 liters, 0 0.500, I guess. So 0.265 divided by 0.5 equals, so 0.53. And then I would add another zero, yeah? Okay, cool. Yeah. And if you didn't run out of room like me, make sure you add your capital M for your units on it. Capital M, moles over liters. Okay. Exactly. All right, so nothing inherently different about doing solutions. It's just a different way of combining units, but in the same way that we've done it before. Yeah. All right, so logically it works a lot like Doing a, using a density to figure out how many moles you have or something like that. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so I think that that's I have a quick question. Yeah. So yeah. for every mole, which is an atom, right? That's what I'm confused about. Like a mole is so a mole is, a mole is a huge number of atoms. A mole is six times ten to the twenty-third atoms. Oh. It's just right. a convenient way of counting them so for every mole of sodium chloride there's the whole weight of that is the 58.448 exactly okay. got it all right so we can do and we can do one one example we'll use the same solution same hypothetical solution um, if I wanted to, if I had this solution that I made, now I know that this is the concentration. If I wanted to, or let's say I had 25 milliliters of this solution, how many moles of sodium chloride would I have? Sorry, we would, I would have to reverse what I just did. Just about, We're, we can use this as a conversion, right? Because it's a combined unit like density. 0.5. So if I have 20, 25 milliliters, I, if I can put that in liters, I can then use this moles over liters to cancel out liters. Okay. So for, for starters, let's just put it in, in liters. So 10 to the three milliliters. One liter. One liter, close that out. Point two, 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 five liters. Right. Zero, two, five liters. And then I want to use 0.265 moles over 0.500 liters. You can do it like that, but you're usually given your concentrations like this. So usually okay. what we would do instead would be to say, okay, 
0.025 liters. And for every one liter, it's 0 0.530 moles. Instead of using the numbers that you started with, just use the combined form, just like grams per cubic centimeter or something like that. Okay. But now if we're tracking our units, everything cancels out and we're left in moles. So this is the way that we would cancel our units out. And then it would be 0 0.013 moles, right? And that's how I would leave it. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I didn't, I didn't plug it into the calculator, but your number seems reasonable. Okay. So, and then you can even specify to moles of NACL. But this is just one more, what we're gonna do in this class, um, a huge chunk of what you're supposed to take out of this class is being able to get to moles and then use that to figure out how much product you could make. So we're gonna go through a lot of different ways of getting from numbers you can actually measure and using that to figure out how many moles you have. Cause we can never directly measure how many moles we have because atoms are too small. Yeah. and moles are too big. Okay. But what we can do is use a mass to get to moles if we use molecular weight, or we can use a concentration to get to moles, just like we just did. And we're going to add some other tricks as well. Concentration is going to be like liquid, because I know one of the problems I was struggling with on the homework, I don't know if it's related to the concept we're going over right now, um, but would be like the rubbing alcohol is like 60% carbon. And you said you were probably going to get to this next lecture, go over this. So uh, we don't have no, to go over it right now, but. I, I think it does, it does tie, tie to this. And, and I think it's worth going over that problem because percentages are another way of writing a concentration, basically. Yeah, and um, it's going to be out of 100, right? Exactly. So if we're starting from a percentage, then we would say, okay, for every 100 something, we get. Mm -hmm. 47 grams of potassium or whatever it is. Oh, sorry. Four is the one I understood. One and two, five was the one I was like a little shaky on. So if I'm, I'm going off of memory here, I, since I don't have the assignment pulled up right now, um, but I, I believe yet. those are, and did I not get, oh, there it is. So you're going to do the same thing for one, and for four, so the, the only difference really is you're using a percentage to get to how many moles you have. And then to get to the formula, you take those moles and you figure out what the ratio of them, what they are relative to each other. Okay. Right. So, so out of that 166.22 grams per mole, 14%, 14 14.5% of that is carbon so i have to figure out the weight of the carbon so i can right am i not on the right track so no so you were on the right track but you were going you said it backwards if oh. you know that so you're starting with a mass because you're starting percent by mass so if you say okay i'm going to start with 100 grams of this compound how many moles of carbon is that Oh, okay. And so you could do something like, okay, for, well, for every 100 grams of compounds with the percentages, 100 grams of, of that compound is 60 grams of carbon. But that gives you how many grams you would have, but we actually want how many moles we have in order to write a formula, right? We want to compare atoms to atoms, not grams okay. to grams. But then you do the molecular weight and you can say, okay, for every 12, 0.011 grams is one mole of carbon and get number of moles of carbon. Okay. And whatever, and so if we're trying to get the empirical formula, once we get to how many moles we have of everything, we do this for everything. We're gonna have a different percentage and a different atomic mass, but we could get to moles of hydrogen, moles of carbon, moles of oxygen, right? Mm -hmm. 
so the once we do that, if we get to, and it winds up being, and I don't remember, was four the one that you said you understood or not? Four is the one I got. So yeah, I understand that a little bit better. Um, and then I was a little bit just confused. I actually had a tutor help me with number one. And then I got confused when I was dividing um, the elements by, by two or by the lowest, um, by one, by uh, potassium, I think it was. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was confused so at that point. I didn't know to divide by two. I have never heard of that. So I didn't know what to do. I just stopped. <laughs> um, so we will. So I'm gonna explain it with this one that you understood and we'll apply that to one because to me, they're almost the same problem. So so by going over okay. this one and then we'll connect it back to the other one and hopefully that'll that'll make it make more sense. Um, okay. if, you have, if you have a compound where you know you have a certain number of moles of everything, so it ends up being Five and then 1.66 moles of oxygen. So we took this compound, we broke it up into its pieces, and we found out that these are the ratios that if you have 100 grams of this compound, this is how much, how many moles you have of these three um, elements. If we know that, we know that they have to be combined by a whole number ratio because you have to have whole numbers of atoms. Mm -hmm. So whatever you have the, the least of, we're just going to take all of these numbers and divide by whatever you have the least of because this might have a coefficient or have a subscript of one. Mm -hmm. And if so, if this has a subscript of one. If we take these other numbers and divide by the smallest number here, we should get either whole numbers or something that's really um, okay. really close to an exact fraction. And when you do that, you get when you divide 13.3 over 1.66, you get something really close to eight. And when you take five and you divide by 1.66, you get something really close to three. And when you take 1.66 and divide by 1.66, you get one. Mm -hmm. So that's how you get the empirical formula. We'd say the empirical formula would be three carbons, eight hydrogens, one oxygen, mm -hmm. because that's the ratio that these show up in, the, in our, um, when we get to number of moles of each. Okay. So where you may have gotten lost on number one, is that the empirical formula didn't match the molecular weight. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I don't understand like the molecular formula is what, I don't know. So the molecular formula is like the, the real formula. It's the empirical formula is called that because empirical just means that you could figure it out from, from numbers you could measure. If you could figure out what the percent by mass was of all the different elements, you could figure out the empirical formula. Um, but sometimes the empirical formula doesn't match the molecular weight of the compound. There's also ways that they had um, in, in the old days of, of measuring the molecular weight of a substance. And so for, for number one, the empirical formula, when you, when you figure out how many moles you have of everything and you put it all together, you wound up with a ratio of for every one potassium, you had one carbon mm -hmm. and two oxygens. Yeah. And if you add up all of those pieces, the molecular weight was 80 something, 83.1. Just by putting together one potassium, one carbon, and two oxygens. And two oxygens. Okay. Because you had twice as many moles of oxygen as you had everything else. Everything else, your potassium and your carbon, you had one, one point two or whatever it was, and you had twice yeah. as many oxygens. Yeah. So what this, where this problem got tricky is that this is what your data says, but then you said you're told, well, the actual molecular weight 
was 166 grams per mole. Mm -hmm. This can't be the right total formula if our actual molecular weight is not the same as the molecular weight we got here. Yeah, but I don't understand why we would just multiply it by two. Like we could just do whatever we want to make it 166. As right? long as you keep the same ratio of atoms. Yes, actually. Right. Okay. I... As long as, <laughs> as you keep it in the same overall ratio, because because these ratios are like, like making a drink mix, right? Um, well, as long as they're, no. yeah. Yeah. I get it. So as long as it's two part whiskey to one part sour to one part soda water, it doesn't matter how much you make, as long as they're in this relative to each other, they're the same. Okay. So that's why we can just double everything. So we're just going to take this whole formula and multiply it by two. Okay. And then you get A2C2O4, which has that molecular weight. Got it. Cool. Hmm. Most of the time, these problems wind up turning out more like four. Occasionally, your empirical formula is not going to match the real formula, and you wind up having to multiply your ratio, your whole thing by us by an integer or something like that. Okay. okay. All right. So, and I'm, I'm willing to go through five as well, um, if there is any need, but at this point, I think I'm going to, I'll stop recording. Um, we are going to continue to use percentages and kind of find ways to turn that into moles like that as well, because a percentage is really just another form of concentration. So it was not all that unrelated. It was sort of leading you guys up to this one.